Here's another problem. Uh, please try to figure out uh, the two quantities that are indicated by question marks here. Well, we can use asterisks to indicate the information we were originally given that we're going to use to solve the problem. And I'll also put an asterisk for this angle. Now, this asterisk does not mean that we're given this angle. This is just to remind us that we're focusing on this angle. Clearly, there would be no point in focusing on this angle because this is not what the question was about. We want to focus on this angle down here. Of course, you never focus on the 90 degree angle. That's boring. Every right triangle has a 90 degree angle. You're focusing on one of the other two angles besides the 90 degree angle. This is another problem where we're given two sides. Uh, well, to find the third side, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. Uh, one of the legs was 3, the other leg was 2. Again, I encourage you to write the general formula first and only then plug in. You can do this calculation in one step on your calculator. You don't need to split this up into separate steps. Just type in 3 squared plus 2 squared, and uh, that would give you 13. Or you might do that in your head. Hypotenuse squared is 13. To get the hypotenuse term by itself, we have to get rid of the squaring term by doing the opposite. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. We have to take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of the left-hand side, all that's left is the hypotenuse term. And we also have to take the square root of the right-hand side. So the hypotenuse is root 13. That might be a good answer, or maybe it would be better to express it as a decimal. Root 13 is 3.6, approximately. Remember, again, that we're not trying to use the right number of significant figures here. I'm just rounding off to what feels good. Now, we still have to figure out this angle. Well, remember that conventionally, we're not going to use this new number to figure out the angle. Instead, even though we could, conventionally what we're going to do is use these numbers that we already know. Um, again, you could use this number if you wanted to. You would get the right answer, but that's not the way it's usually done. Uh, so let's try to use these two numbers. Uh, well, let's label the sides. Maybe I should have done that already. This side is the hypotenuse. This side over here that's adjacent to the asterisk angle is the adjacent side. And this side over here, length 3, this is the opposite side opposite to the asterisk angle and adjacent to the asterisk angle. This is the main reason we put this asterisk in, so we can tell who's adjacent to it and who's opposite to it. Uh, that's something that when people are in a hurry or getting lazy, they can oftentimes get confused about. People oftentimes get confused about what's adjacent and what's opposite. If you're finding that sometimes um, you get make a careless mistake and you mix up the opposite side and the adjacent side, it's probably because you're being lazy and not marking the angle that you're focusing on with an asterisk. So uh, don't be lazy. Uh, if, you're having, if you're having any trouble with these problems, mark the angle that you're focusing on with an asterisk to make it extra clear which side is adjacent and which side is opposite. And also, if you're finding you're making any careless mistakes, keep writing down which side is adjacent and which side is opposite. Don't try to keep track in your head of which side is opposite and which side is adjacent until these problems are very easy for you. Again, eventually these problems will be so easy that you don't need to write so much stuff down. But if you find that you're still making careless mistakes, the way to stop making careless mistakes is to write more stuff down. Again, the way to stop making careless mistakes is to be using the same notation precisely that I'm demonstrating on the board. And then eventually, when you get more comfortable, you can skip some steps and use less notation. All right, so uh, we better give this angle a name. Let's call it theta. So we have tangent of theta, toa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. What do I plug in for tangent of theta? What do I plug in for theta? Well, nothing. I don't know theta. And of course, remember, don't just write down tangent equals. You've got to write down the angle. You've got to write down the angle, not just the tangent. Uh, the opposite side here had a length of 3, and the adjacent side had a length of 2. I'm going to postpone this calculation, although you could do it now if you liked. Uh, so, um, now I need to get theta by itself. Um, well, I need to get rid of the tangent function. The way you get rid of something is by doing the opposite. Well, mathematicians have decided that the opposite of a tangent is an inverse tangent. So we have to take the inverse tangent of both the left and the right-hand side. When we take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, all that's left is theta. 
but we still have to take the inverse tangent, also known as the arc tangent, of the right hand side. And now we can do this in one step on your calculator. You probably have to hit second, then you hit tangent, which gives you the inverse tangent. And remember, you need parentheses to show that there's two things involved in the tangent. On some calculators, the calculator will give you the first parenthesis, and then you just have to put the second parenthesis in. Okay, so uh, we have to take the inverse tangent of 3 halves, which is approximately 56 degrees. That angle was 56 degrees. We would pronounce this the tangent of theta is 3 halves. And a good way to read this is theta is the angle whose tangent is 3 halves. Theta is the angle whose tangent is 3 halves. That's what inverse tangent means. Uh, I think a common mistake here would be to just take the tangent of 3 halves. Maybe I should have mentioned that common mistake before. You can't just take the tangent of 3 halves. You've got to take the inverse tangent of 3 halves. We know that because of the way we work through the algebra. Um, we were taking the tangent of theta. And then when we got rid of that tangent, we had to do that by taking the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. So don't take the tangent of 3 halves. Take the inverse tangent, or the arc tangent of 3 halves. I hope that if you're missing any of these problems, um, you're redoing it before you go on to the next problem. Don't go on to the next problem until the previous problems are very easy for you.